Alright guys, the first thing we need to do uh, to get started on this folio is to cut our papers. So, our, our cardstock actually. So what I'm using is the heavyweight cream color from Paper Studio. It comes from Hobby Lobby. It's just this one here. This was a full package when I started. And uh, I think I used 11 sheets to do the uh, pages and the flaps. And then I wanted to show you the paper that I'm going to use. This is called Sun Showers. It's by Colorbach, and I got it from uh, Walmart. It was only $5 for the 8.5 by 11, but it reminded me of Mary Inglebright. And if you've ever seen any of her graphics, they are just adorable. And I started cutting some of the cut aparts to use for flaps. And here's a few of them. <clears throat> some others. They're just so cute. She does really neat stuff. And this is not Mary Inglebright, but it just reminds me of her kind of whimsical graphics. Like that in this little flower. And I'll use some more of them as I go through. And it had three sheets of the cut aparts. A lot of journaling tags. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it has this alphabet. A sheet of borders. And then it's got all the papers. And they're so cute. It's really adorable. So that's what I'm going to use on this album with the cream color cardstock. The first few pages, the borders and the uh, cut aparts are cardstock and the rest of it is paper. So that's what I'll use when we get to that point, but I wanted to give you the cut list. So if you want to make it along with me, you can have your pieces cut out. So the first thing you need is for the base page, and as usual, I've got them all close pinned together. Oops. Let's see if I can remember what I did. This is your base page. And it is 8.5 by 11. And when you put it on your scoreboard with the 11 inch at the top, you're going to score it at 5 and 10. And then you're going to cut it off at 10.5. And, and that will make your page. And it will be a top pocket. This will be your flap, your hinge. We're not going to seal this to the uh, folder itself. We'll put just a tiny bit of glue right inside this score line and seam it right here. And then we'll have two inserts. And they are cut at four and a quarter by eight. And they'll fit inside these pockets with plenty of room to spare. So that is your base page and your inserts. <coughs> Okay. Okay, it will go in the album like this. This will be your hinge. You can either hinge it like this away from you, which I probably will. It looks better if it's not so exposed, and then you can um, put a strip over it after you get it in your book. Then I cut flaps to go on the front side of this page using some of the cutter parts. So depending on what cutter parts you use, you know, you can cut flaps to match it. I'm going to put this one up here at the top. This one will be on the side. Like that. And then there will be a little tiny pocket at the bottom with one of the cut parts. And I'll put some more um, uh, mats or uh, journaling spots or something in the pocket and that will hold these down so that I won't need a magnet. Okay, so that is the front side of this one. Now, I did not write down the measurements of these. Uh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. This little pocket is 6 by 1 and 7 eighths, and it's scored on both short ends at a half. I did not score the bottom. It'll just uh, glue flat to the page. Then these cut aparts, the first one is cut at three and three eighths by five and a half, and it's scored at the top at a half. And then this smaller one is three and seven eighths by three and five eighths, and it's scored along the side at a half. So that is that. Now your cut aparts might be different sizes, so you have to measure them as you go, unless you have this particular pay, paper from uh, Walmart. 
Okay, then so when we flip this over to the back of the book, of course this will be out of the way because that's your hinge. This, if I can follow my, my thinking at the time. Okay, this is, oh my goodness, I have a menagerie of paper here. This will be the next flap. Let me get this waterfall out of here so I can show you this one. This one I'm calling uh, large flap number one. So this is going to be your hinge. That won't be there. This flap before we seal it, before we seal this uh, shut, this will go just inside of it like that to flap over this way. And it measures, let me see, <laughs> that is the large flap, that is a one half of a sheet of the eight and a half by eleven. Uh, it is cut, I didn't write down the measurements, what a dummy. I know it's eight and a half. It's probably four and a quarter wide. Let me measure and make sure. It's eight and a half high. Yes, eight and a half by five and a half. Eight and a half by five and a half. Let me write that on there like I did the rest of them. Then if I need to, eight and a half by five and a half. And then with the eight and a half at the top, you're going to score it at a half and three quarters. And that will give you that gusset in there because we're going to have a waterfall back here. Okay, then on your waterfall, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces that measure three and seven eighths by four and three quarters. And they're all scored um, at a half inch on the top and that is with wait a minute with the four and three quarters at the top of your scoreboard you're going to score each one at a half and there's nine of those and they're going to go on the inside of this and then this will be a scrap left from when you cut out all these pieces you'll have a one and a half inch strip that's eight and a half inches long and you're going to score it at a half and, uh, let me see, what was it? This is eight and a half. You're going to score it at seven and seven eighths and at eight. And that gives you a little bitty gusset down here. And we can trim this off later when we decide exactly how long we want it. I didn't want to trim it off now and then find out I wish I'd left it longer. Okay, now let me put this back together like I had it. <laughs> so I don't lose where I was. Okay, and these are for the front. These are my little flaps. Yep, those are those. Let me put those together. Then on the back side of this um, large flap that we have the gusset on, we're going to have a photo mat in the center, a large photo mat. And at the bottom will be a small pocket with one of the cut aparts on it. And I did score it at a half on three sides. This, I didn't measure. Oh gosh, what's wrong with me? This is six and a quarter by four and a quarter. Six and a quarter by four and a quarter. It's a photo mat. And then this will go, let me slide that under there. This will go down at the bottom, like so. And then we'll have these two large flaps. <coughs> and I believe they're six and a half by four and a quarter. Let me make sure. Yes, six and a half by four and a quarter. And with
put the six and a half at the top, at the top you're going to score it at a half. And they'll go on the back side of this page, one at the top and one at the bottom. So that'll give you two good sized photo mats there. Let me flip this back together here so I don't lose it. And then we'll go to base page two. Now I'm not going to ink any of this cream colored but I probably will use a light ink just to get rid of the white edges on the paper um, before I glue it down. I'll use something really light. I don't want it to kind of muddy up the pages and make them look dirty since everything's a light color. Okay, base page two is the same, scored at five and ten and then cut off at ten and a half. So, I'm going to get my little clips out of here. So this is the same way, it's like this, and this will be folded underneath. It's kind of going the wrong direction at the moment, but that's okay. We have uh, this flap that will go back here on the back. This is your base page, then on the back side we have a flap that is five and a quarter by eight and a half and with the five and a quarter at the top you're going to score it at a half. That goes on the back side of the base page. On the front, pa front part we're going to have two little pockets and the pocket measures where's my pocket? Here it is. This is that. These are okay. This is my pocket. Four by four and a half. This will make your pocket this way. So you'll need two pieces that are four by four and a half. It's this one. Wrong piece. Four by four and a half. Then you'll need two pieces that are five by four and a half. When we fold these two pieces under and glue this to it, then we'll have an open little pocket. And those will attach in here. And we'll have a tag insert. There's the other one. And then this will attach on the top as a flap and it will have this little journaling spot on it. And that one goes on this one. These two measure four and a quarter by four and a half. These two, and they're scored um, I tried to write it all on there. I guess I got ahead of myself. These are five by four and a quarter. Yep. And with the five at the top, you'll score one end and a half and trim off your edges, and that'll give you four and a half by four and a quarter. You'll have two of those flaps. And those go on the front. Lots of little pieces, I know. That goes on here. Now this is, yes, that goes on the front of base page, too. Then on the back, <coughs> this actually flaps out. And, goodness, on top of this, actually under the flap, or on top of this flap, you'll have two photo mats that measure four by three and three quarters. We'll go here. Of course, we're going to paper everything first. Then you'll have two large pieces. This is another sheet of cardstock. Um, and this one measures four by eight and a half. This one measures three by eight and a half. And with the long edge, or the short edge, small edge at the top, the three at the top, you're going to score it a half. That leaves you two and a half inches by eight and a half. This one, you'll also do the same. You'll score it at a half. 
and that will leave you um, three and a half by eight and a half. Then this will kind of make like a little bit of a gatefold. And this will be your closure with a magnet on top of that. And that's it for now. That is all the cut pieces. I haven't decided, um, I haven't put the album cover together yet. Uh, until I get these assembled, I don't know how big I want my spines to be. So that's why I'm doing it this way this time. So you can go ahead and get your pieces cut out and then we'll put this together. Alright, I'll cut my papers and get them inked and we'll come back and assemble all these pages. Alright, thanks guys. Have a good day. Okay, we're ready to put these pages together. Let me get this other light on here. That ought to help so that you can see better. I'm going to try to sit down for part of this. If it don't work, I'll kick the chair out of the way and stand up. Okay, so we're on page one. I have, um, I gave you all the measurements. Um, and as I always do, I end up making changes as I start putting them together. But I'll tell you, when I run into something I changed, in case you've already cut your papers out. Let me get my little eraser. I already saw a pencil mark I missed. Oops, these are all base page two. I don't need those. <coughs> so this is base page one, if you remember. Let me make sure where I need to be to be in frame. That's good right there, isn't it? Let's scoot this forward a little bit, and there we go. That might help a little bit. Okay. I did ink all my papers, not the cardstock. The cream cardstock, I left it alone. Um, I used the Ranger Archival Ink and Coffee and the little Tim Holtz tool. And I just went around everything just straight on the edges. I didn't brush it this way like we usually do. I just got rid of that white edge. But I didn't want it on the front of this. Not this time. These these are happy colors. So, alright. This is the little pocket for the bottom. This is base page one. So, what we want to do is to put this little flap at the top of this pink page. And we don't have to miter it because it's not going to show. So just decide where you want your piece. And add a little glue, whatever kind you want to use. I'm using the art glitter glue just because I like it. And as luck would have it, where's my bone folder? I always do that. Bone folder, where'd you go? It's here somewhere. Well, I can't see it for looking. <clears> hmm, <throat> mm, isn't that a pip? Let me get another one out here then. I've got another one over here. I don't like it as well, but I can use it until I find the other one. It's gotten covered up in one of my stacks of stuff here. I sure don't see it. And I had it this morning. Oh well. It'll rear its head here. I'll use this one. It's not my favorite, but uh, it's better than not having one. And then this one, not that, this goes on the back of that. This one is going to go along the side. And I want it to be up enough that I can have my little pocket at the bottom. <coughs> and it's going to be like this. So we want to move that up just a little bit, about like so, and then we can glue that down. And I did miter that one. 
when I need to, I forget, and then I do it when I don't need to. Just fold that over and garnish it down with your bone folder. Now this is our base page. And it's going to go in the book like this. And when it's in your book, then this will be your um, hinge. Oh, you know what? I can't do it that way. I have to do it this way. Because I need this to hook my large flap to. So there you go. Make sure you do that right. <laughs> the opening that we're going to seal will be right here. I guess it would make yes it would make a difference. I want this to go the uh, hinge to be on the right side when I put it in the book, and then we have that large flap that's going to hold the waterfall that needs to attach over here. So we will put this down with our art glitter glue. Get something it sets up so fast. <coughs> The only thing I don't like about it is how quick it dries, but it does a really good job, and if you have any ooze, it doesn't leave a shiny residual on your paper. It does do a really nice job. <coughs> so let's get this centered as best we can. stand up for that. I can't do it that way. I can't. I have to look down on it to get it straight. Okay. Now yeah, that'll be good. Let's lift these flaps up and make sure this is all our edges are down nice. Okay, this little bird print, yes, this is right side up like that, is going to go <coughs> on the back side here. And then we'll go back and add little tuck spots and embellishments and um, all kinds of ephemera and stuff when, once we get all these little papers down. And we'll make the <coughs> album cover at the last. Normally I make my cover and lay it aside, but because I was making all these flaps and stuff, I just wasn't sure exactly how big I wanted my spine, or how thick I wanted the book to be at the spine, so. All right, and here's the other birdie paper. So I'm leaving that to last this time. I cut the covers, just not the spine, because I like I said, I don't know how much room I'm going to need in the album. So this is going to go on here. Just make sure it doesn't cover your score line so that it doesn't get all crumpled when you fold these flaps in. Okay. Give it a nice burnish. papers are so pretty. I told my grandson I call them the happy papers. Because <laughs> they're just happy colors. Happy, cheerful colors. And then this folds down. And these little galoshes will go on there. Overseas they call them wellies. Instead of galoshes or boots, they're called wellies. Strange, isn't it? 
And that goes on here. See how pretty that comes together? It's, they're such pretty colors. See a little paper. There, came off. No, it didn't. Piece of paper. And it's going to bug me. There. Came off. Okay, now we can put our... Oh, here it is. I'm losing track of it. We will fold these under. And I always like to burnish it underneath away from me. Especially if you, this is the, the heavyweight cardstock, so it won't give you any trouble. But if you have some of the thinner cardstock, and you turn it over like this, it will actually pull and mush up on you. And it can change the, um, the fold and how it lays. And it can really distort your paper. So I'm just going to miter these so we don't have any edges. Stick it out. Looking ugly and messy. Okay, so we're just going to put a little bit of glue down at the bottom, just a tiny, because I want to leave most of this for a pocket. I'm going to stick that down there. And this one the same way. And it should go end to end, but if for some reason it doesn't, just center it as best you can. Okay. And then this little ephemera piece that I cut out from one of the cut aparts that I showed you in the front of the book. It's just going to decorate the pocket. Like that. Okay. Now, we'll turn this over. In our large flap, we'll go back here before we put anything else down. Get my paper clips off of it. Paper clips, clothespins. So it is going to attach inside this score line just this portion. We want the um, gusset or the extra space that I gave with that other quarter inch to stay up so that uh, when we put the waterfall on there it won't be too bulky. There's that. See now this little gusset in here will give us space for that waterfall because it's going to take up some some room. This one is going to go in here and we'll come back and add um, photo mats or something to it later. <coughs> Right now we're just going to get our base pages and papers put together. And then we can start decorating after that. Okay how pretty and cheery these colors are. They're just so bright and happy. So it's the happy paper. The happy paper pad. Okay. 
Okay, now the yellow goes on this side, and then our waterfall will go over that. for the waterfall. Let me put this pin in the glue here for just a second. So we've got the front part of the base page and we'll have um, some photo mats and stuff that'll go in this pocket and they'll keep these from flapping out. So we won't need a magnet. We'll go back and decorate this later. Right now we're going to do the waterfall. And actually, we can go ahead and seal this pocket while we're here. Just put a tiny bit of glue right down this seam. I don't want a lot because I don't want to close it up and take too much space. sealed, this folds to the back. An extra burnish never hurts. Okay. Okay, what we have here is the band the waterfall here. Now I like to put it down first on a, a backing sheet. Is that glue? No, it's just the cardstock. <clears throat> and you don't need to miter these pieces. They just need to stay straight. So I always cut a piece the same width and glue each one starting with the top. And we've got nine of them. So we'll start gluing those down, and then I'll go off camera and finish them so I don't take all your time. But I want to give you the, the gist of it anyway, especially for those of you that are new. I want you to have all the ammunition for this you can have. So this matches up at the top and on both sides. And you want to make sure your, your corners line up or your sides with the side of this strip because if you get off in the beginning it's just going to get worse as you go along. So if this doesn't match up perfectly trim it with your scissors which I'm down just a hair but it's okay because this piece this backing piece is plenty long enough. See just trim that little bit off with my scissors and that makes it lay flush but it needs to be flush on both sides. And then you lift this one up. Make sure it's burnished good. And then number two will go right up against this one. Right up against that one. Let me burnish that again. Anyway, it will lay right flush against that one. Again, make sure your edges are lined up perfectly. So let's glue this one in place. lined up all the way over 
over here. It looks like I've got just a hair of overhang right there. I may not have cut it exactly straight. So I'll just trim it right there. And we're good. Okay, <clears throat> now we're ready for three. I'll put the rest of those down, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the waterfall put together. And I want to go to the back side of this first. This is where the waterfall goes in here. And we'll glue that down, but... I want to do the back side first because once that's in, it's going to be hard to get this to lay down flat or, you know, go over it with your bone folder. So, let's put this together real quick. So, this is your top piece, six and a half by four and a quarter, scored on the top edge at a half. And we're just going to center it over the top and glue it down. And then we have one for the bottom. Look like that's laying quite straight. Let me straighten that up a little. That's better. And then this one comes up from the bottom, same measurement, six and a half by four and a quarter. And we'll glue it down. put a magnet in this one. I don't think I have. I got one out for the waterfall bracket a while ago. I don't know if I put them back or if I left them out. Oh, here they are. I left them out. Okay, let's put a magnet in this one just to help it stay closed. Nice and neat. Okay, we need a plus. in here. Why'd I pick up that? And a minus. And we're going to match it up like that. Put that on there. Oh, it's the opposite side. Let me put some glue on it. Get the glue on it. And it'll stay put. Okay. This one is going to go on the top right here. Okay. 
with a little extra around the magnet just to make sure the little turkey stays where we want him to be and just like that up and we want I think we want this one under here yes that one. And we'll put this one down here. This one up here. Then we can glue this to the back and put in our waterfall. And base page one will be done. Well, not done, but I mean, the major parts are assembled. We'll go back and embellish and do our photo mats and stuff after we get all these put together. this to the back side. Oops. little turkey down here. Looks pretty good. And we'll have photo mats in there. I think I've got, yeah, I've got two cut for here. This little pocket. We could put the pocket in there. We'll score both of those. And then we want to turn this under. And burnish it. And then we want to cut out this little corner here. I can see where I'm at. I think I got it right. <laughs> okay. 
Yep, and it'll go on there. So let's put our glue on the sides first. And on the bottom. I think I did it backwards before. No, we had one that glued the flat to the album, that's right. And we're going to put it up just a hair over that blue. <coughs> I'm getting blue on my fingers. Okay, I was going to say bone folder, where'd you go? It's the runaway bone folder. <coughs> They're all running away from me today. This little ephemera piece. It's going to mount on this yellow. And then it will go on the white and the cream. Enjoy the simple things. Now I'm not going to uh, stamp not going to mount those yet. I want to stamp on them first. I guess I can stamp them now, can't I? Why not? And we'll have that out of the way. I didn't cut many of the photo mats yet. But these two I did. Okay, place photo here. times. Let me wipe it off with this baby wipe. I got that new Gina K tidy towel. I really like it. It's nice. This is not straight, Bobby. It's going to have to stay. It's down. Okay. This is one place where I had one long photo mat, but it covered so much of the page, it just, it took away from all the paper, all the pretty stripes. So instead I cut two small ones. And these are three and a quarter by two and a quarter, instead of one big one. Just like that. Okay, there and there. Now we can open it up and put our waterfall in there. Okay, now I still have <coughs> a little papering to do on this. <coughs> Excuse me. I have to glue this down on the back. My bracket. And it's going to go centered right in here. And I placed my magnet right under here. It's a little glue. That's unusual. I should be able to get it to come off. And the other one is here, and once I mat that, that won't show. Okay. So we're going to mat this down. I have an eraser that removes glue, so I'll get that off of there. I obviously got carried away when I glued that magnet in place. A little excessive on the gluing. Okay. So we're going to put this right in the center. And it's clothespin time. Make sure they stay put until they set up good. Okay. 
that is base page one. Okay, now we're ready for two. I'm going to take a short break. It's about lunchtime here, and I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, we're ready to put base page two together. Okay, let's get these clothespins off of here. The first thing we have are these pockets. And we're going to put those together. Very easy. Easy, easy. These are just the papers that go on them. You have your two pieces. <coughs> Four by five, I believe. I'm going to double check it because I think I had to make a change. Four and a half. So it's five with the score. It's scored at a half and then four. So four by five is right. And this one, we've got a little dirt on it. Four, just a little over four and a quarter, about four and three eighths by, should be five. Yes, by five, and then it's scored on two sides. Uh, with the, it would be with uh, with the four and three eighths at the top of your scoreboard, you would score at a half on each side. Then this will lay underneath here, and this will make our pocket. So we'll glue those together. And I do want to snip these little ends right here. And I'll catch them down here just in case. Make sure we don't have any overhang. And we'll put our glue on both sides. Tell you, you the slightest little bit of dust or anything, it shows on these light colors. Picks up every little bit. So we'll match up these front corners and all the way down the sides. And then we'll burnish this. And then we'll put just a little tiny bit of glue inside the bottom of this pocket so that our insert doesn't come flying out the wrong end. And we'll burnish that. And how do we want these? We'll put this one on here. There's one pocket, and the other one is exactly the same. So we'll snip these. I'll tell you, after I get done making an album, I have little pieces everywhere I have to clean up. <laughs> Okay, and 
going to go on the back side of this one. Catch up our top corners. And all the way down the side. side of this one. glue in there. And I'll we'll put the pink on the front side. This is your base page again. This is going to go here. I think we can just go ahead and glue these down this time instead of gluing it to the back of the paper. Oh, look what I'm doing. I'm putting it on the wrong side, too. Not real smart. Didn't want it there, that's for sure. I'm so used to going it to the back side of the paper. We want it on this side. This one's going to go up here. Make sure we get our placement right. Like so, right along the edge. This one down. <clears throat> Not like that. Be up just there. Push on it just a little bit. Okay, now we can put this one in place. These cutest little flowers. So sweet. Just love this paper, and the price was so cheap. I thought, wow, for such cute stuff. Okay, now this is the back side of base page two. And I've got my clouds for this side. But I want my large flap in there first before I put the clouds down. And this one does not have the, um, the gusset in it because there's no waterfall. Not this time. So this is going to go...
right up to the fold but not covered it. Be sure you stay off the fold. Make sure your edges line up. inside here on the other side, I think. Make sure, yep. Yellow on the other side. is that way and this is going to go here and we're going to have two photo mats that are four by three and three quarters so I actually cut two more photo mats I <laughs> thought I left it all to the end and then this is the last flap so these flaps will have to go down first before we put this in. Did I close up the, the base page? Nope, I didn't. I didn't close up the base page. <laughs> I could have left it open for another flap, too, couldn't I? Would be an idea for another time. Okay, let's take these little designer papers out of the way. Get up on my stool here for a minute. Give my back a break. That goes underneath. Okay, so this one goes another little trim job. On the right side. Just inside the edge of the fold. Matching up the bottom and the top. the opposite side. Snip, snip again. <coughs> More glue. Where would we be without our art glitter glue? I would hate to think. Be sure if you guys order it, um, you get that fine tip for it because it makes it so nice to have that. 
My sister ordered it from Amazon and she didn't get the tip and I told her to get a hold of Tamara. Country Craft Creations get a tip from her. So it makes it so much nicer to put your your glue down in such a a small bead of glue. It's so much nicer than big globs that spurt out everywhere. I told her to order it from Tamara in the first place, but a different sister ordered it and she got it somewhere else. So. But she didn't know about the tip, I guess. She knows now, though. They tried to make a project and all they had was the black cap on it. Of course, it came out like a gusher. I said, oh my gosh. That's not a good thing. All right. All right, this is going to go on the inside. This goes on the outside. And we will have this one closing with a magnet too. First magnet is going to go inside here. <coughs> Dad or something in here flying around driving me crazy. <coughs> I don't know if it's a fly or what it is. Okay, there is that. It's a fly. He's a little bitty guy, but he's still a pain in the behind. Okay, there is that. Now that holds our magnet. And this is going to glue like that. So about from the eye passed over that way, we want to glue it.
it's going to go. So we will just close this like this. Press it down. Lift this one back up. And it stayed there. <laughs> That's not where we wanted it. Darn it. Alright. We will start this over. Let me get another one. <coughs> There's the wrong side. That's what I did. Now we'll start again. And it should stay where I want it. Yes. Don't you love it when a plane comes together? Okay, so now we can put this down. This is going to go here. Then I'll cut a little piece of something to go behind that. Just so that plain card doesn't show. Kind of naked looking. Oh, the puppies are starting again. I hear them. Must be getting hungry. Oh, they were playing last night. Just finally standing up and taking a few steps on their own. They're so cute. Okay, there's that one. Just about there, kids. We're getting done. Okay, so that is base page two, except that we have our inserts here, which we need to paper, and I'll go ahead and do those off camera so I don't take up all your time. It's just a matter of gluing the paper to these that go in these pockets and the long inserts that go in the base page, and then I will, um, what I'll do to figure out the spine <laughs> is just to stack these two up like this. They're going to go in the album this way. And I will need about an inch. So these will fold back when they're glued down. So I'm going to say about an inch and a half spine. That's what I'm going to cut. An inch and a half. Inch and a half by... What did I cut the others? I think I cut the length nine. Let me measure them for you and then you can cut yours if you want to. I have the two pieces that are... I'm sure I cut them at nine. Yes, nine by five and three quarters and then I'll cut I've got some scraps here let me see if I got one that's that's one and a half that's plenty I'll just cut that off at nine and use that and then we'll have plenty of room for embellishments and um, whatever we want to do photo mats journaling spots okay I'll finish up these and I'll cut this off and I'll be back and we'll finish making up our album. 
Okay, we're ready to embellish our pages. Let me move page two out of the way a little bit so y'all can see. Uh, we pretty much have page one done because we have the two flaps and then I put a little photo mat or a journaling spot, whichever you want it to be, in the pocket that helped keep these two closed so you don't need a magnet and you can always put more in there. There's plenty of room. So when we go over to the next page, it's a full page, and I've cut out photo mats and journaling spots to go underneath. And these are three and a half by four and a half. Let me erase that off of there. That won't look too good, will it? And the little journaling spots are three and a half by two. And you can doodle some lines on there if you want, or you can stamp it. I'm not very good at doodling, so I'm not going to give that a shot myself. I've tried it before, and I'm never happy with it. The people who do it seem to do it really effortlessly, but it doesn't seem to work too well for me. So let's stamp our little photo stamp on the two larger ones with the coffee ink. Quit, Pepper. Now go in there and lay down and be quiet. Go on. When my daughter's gone, her dog wants to be out here. He doesn't want to be in the room by himself. And he barks at everything. And I mean everything. Let me wipe this off lightly because we'll be using it again. Okay, so we're going to put glue, the art glitter glue, on three sides so we can stick that journaling spot down in there. Let me get my placement right, Not like so. And like so. Okay. Let me glue down the other three. And then these, once they're lined or whatever you decide you want to do with them. And you can put tabs on them if you want to. I cut out a few tabs. Not enough to finish the book, but I can always do more. I used this uh, Stampin' Up! tab punch. I think it's a new one this year. Makes a little tab like this, and I just put them on some cream cardstock because they're just paper and they're really kind of thin. But we can... I think I better have a tab on it, hadn't I? It's wanting to sink all the way down in there. We can put a little tab on these two. I can always cut out more if I need them. They're real quick to punch out and I just punched them out of scraps. It'll give you something to get a hold of. Better let it dry before I shove on it too hard. <coughs> and I got another one here. We'll do a pink one. You can hear him grumbling. He thinks he's a bad boy. And I'll leave them sticking up a little bit until they set up so I don't have to jerk on them. This, of course, is the waterfall. I do need to cover this back, and I will do that before I do the final walkthrough. Then we get to the last page, and we have this is for the insert. 
This opens this way, and this opens down. And we already have two photo mats and a little pocket in here. So what I wanted to do... Pepper, stop! Let's put a photo mat here with a little journaling spot. And then the same up at the top. So again, <coughs> again I have to race. These are three and a quarter square. Pepper, stop! Actually, all I gotta do is glue down the opposite side and it won't make any difference, will it? Duh. Look, oh, let me stamp it. Before I put it in there. This photo here. This photo here. Is that the right one? That looks smaller. It is a little bit. Don't think that's the right one. This is a three and a quarter square. Okay. There. And there. Okay, so we can glue this down. So this is three and a quarter square. And we'll glue all four sides down. center it so it looks even as much as possible and then we'll put this little three and a quarter by one and a half for a little journaling spot thing for the top. <clears throat> Three and a quarter square. find something pretty to put on here. Smile often and laugh, all, laugh always. It doesn't show up real good. How about this April showers? That might look pretty on there. Or something in pink maybe. I've got so many little things here I cut out from the paper collection. And I wanted to put something on there. There that looks good. That'll make a cute little tuck spot. We'll do that, and we can put some um, photo mats or journaling spots, you know, like so. You can put photos under it, leave it open like that. Or you can tuck more little, little goodies under it. So we'll leave that one there. I think I'll leave this one for the moment. I may decide to go back and do something with that one. Then we have the insert for page one. And I think that was where this one went. Like this. I had so many out here. Like that. Okay, so this one is four by three and a quarter. is two and a half by three and a quarter. Oops, 
Don't do it upside down, Bobby. There's that. I will turn it over. And how about three and a quarter square? See, they both say three and a quarter square, but that one is not three and a quarter square. want them to be alike. There. That's what goes there. There we go. Okay, so double photo mat on this one. And then these are three and a quarter square. put a little pull tab on this. I hope it doesn't stick too far out the top, but I feel like you need some way to get a hold of it. <coughs> okay. And that will go in Her pocket in the front. If I can find it. It's right there. Don't want to catch the edges of the cardstock until it sets up. There we go. So there's that. Okay. Let's find something pretty to put on here. Life is sweet. And I'll just uh, glue it at the bottom and on the left hand side so that a picture will slide right up under it. It's too big. Oh, we've got so many here. I know what I want for that just a note. I know where I want it to go. I think this will look cute. Let's put this back down in now. Out of the way. I'll put this Imagine up here. Might be a little bit too big. How about this green one? That's cute there. Okay. Just need something to add a little color to the page. Dress it up a little bit. Okay. There's that. So that takes care of those pages. And shall we add something to these? Got my little pin out there. Mm, I don't know. That might look cute there like that. I think I'll just put a little glue right down the center so you can tuck from the bottom or the top. Because they might want to put a little small photo down there. Enjoy. Actually, that might look good up here. The blue on the green. <coughs> and let's find something small for down yonder. I think this is too long. Yep. That's long too. A lot of stuff, and 
I've been wanting to stick to each other. I ran them through one of those um, sticker makers. I think I like that there though with the yellow. I'm going to go ahead and use it. And just glue it down the center like the other one. Okay. There's that and that. So that takes care of page one. And as you notice, I've added something here because I didn't think this was going to lay flat like I wanted it to. And I'll go over that with you when we get to the next portion. But we need to put page two together. And we have two photo mats that are four by three and five eighths. Let me turn them over so that doesn't show. And then I cut out these little photo corners so that you don't have to glue the, the picture in. Let me grab my chair. Let's see if I can sit down for a little bit. have a did a tutorial a while back on how to make these little photo corners <clears throat> and I'll put a um, description or link in the uh, description box down below to show you how to make these they're really fun and easy you just put position your piece where you want it put a little glue on the back and slide it over this photo mat Oops. And stick it down. Then the person will be able to pop this out and put their picture in. Or they can keep this in and mount their picture to it, whichever they want. But that way you don't have to have glue to put your picture in. You just tuck it behind these corner mounts. So we'll put it over there. Square up your piece and stick that down. And that's all there is to that. And they're real easy to make. I use the Martha Stewart corner punches from some of the punch around the pages that I had. I've got so many and I've had them forever. And I just I hate having stuff that I don't use. And I'll bet my craft room looks like some of these people's warehouses that actually sell supplies. Believe me, I don't sell supplies, but I would be able to if I wanted to. But I keep all <laughs> because I always think I'm going to use it. Okay, there's that corner. And here's the fourth one. Just slide it over there. And press it into place. You can use any corner punch that you have. So see if you put a photo behind there, how easy that fits. That's what it would look like. Or if you have some color showing through. Isn't that pretty? They turn out so pretty, and I've made them with tons of punches. And then you have these little pockets that we did the pullouts in. And I'm going to leave those blank for now. We have these two photo mats that aren't stamped yet. I don't know if I glued those. No, I didn't glue them down. I wonder if I should put a little journaling spot under them. I don't know how much space I have in this one. Not a lot. We could. I'll glue them down just on three, just in case. It never hurts anything. You can always change your mind, but if, at least if it's open, you have the option. These papers are just so pretty. So bright and springy and cheery. Okay. And I just said I was going to leave it open, didn't I? Look at me. Get to blabbing away and not paying attention to what I'm doing. It won't be any time and we'll have this done though. It goes pretty quick. It's like any other album, you spend more time cutting and inking than you do anything else. Then the assembly is like bada bing bada bang and you're done. Okay. 
How about this April showers for a little tuck spot? That's cute. And what else we got? Some of them are just too long. And that's blue. Don't want blue on Okay, so we're going to put this one up here for a little tuck spot. Just two with two of the little uh, one side and the bottom glued. So we'll do it like the bottom kind of make it. And then I found these two little bitty pieces and I just snipped them like a banner. And I'm gonna put these over here on the other side. And we'll leave it open for the photo. And this one has got the boot. With some flowers sticking out of it. Or a... Yeah. Rain boots. So there's that. Okay. There's glue. Oozy glue. Okay, now oh, I've got the insert up here. Well, I don't know if I cut anything out for that or not. Okay, we're going to put this one this away. And this one this away. This one's going to have lots of photo mats. But that's what memory albums are about, isn't it? Preserving your memories. I'll tell you, I wish, when I was in nursing school, I wish I'd written everybody's name on the back of our group picture because I thought surely I'd remember everybody's name and I saw it the other day and I could pick out a few of the first names, but that was about it. I wonder if I should put this down here for journaling spot. That would be cuter than just a manila piece. Okay, we're going to put this little journaling spot down here at the bottom. I think that'll be cute, and it'll pick up the yellow from the other side, and then the little suns from this page. So we're going to put this one down here. About like so. And then we're going to have a journaling spot up here. And I just feel like I should put it on a piece of cream. Let me see what I've got. I can put it on real quick. It's not mounted like everything else. Let me hit it with the brown ink just a sec. So it'll be like everything else. some of that cream just to give it a little mortar. We want it all to match, right? At least it should anyway. Okay. Grab my scissors. Tell you I'm not going to have a lot of scraps left when this is done. I've used a lot of them on these cutouts that was in the package. So they go off of there and make it even. My edge wasn't even on this one. Okay, now we can put this one up there. And two more little photo mats.
that'll work. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? Okay, there's that one. Okay, and then we go to the back side. And we had this little gatefold with a magnet. And I've got my pieces cut for it. And this is going to be one, two, three photos. Actually, four photos and two journaling spots. So, let's stamp those. There we go, so we can glue these down. You know what, I'm going to leave these just three sides so I can put a journaling spot behind them and then the journaling spots on the narrow side can go for the other narrow side. That'll make it more even. I'll just cut two more little pieces to go up under these pictures. These photo spots or mats. Okay. And these will be for journaling. These can go with these two. Cool, huh? What is that? I guess it's part of the paper. I thought it was a spot, but it's not. <coughs> Dust or something got on it, but I guess not. Okay. This one. have these little Jolie's flowers I found in my stash. I thought I might use some of them. They're very little, so they might look cute. And then there's some bigger ones. There's three. Three of the bigger ones. <coughs> and see if there's enough of the little ones. Yeah, there it is. Those are cute. There's two extras left. Okay. Alright, so we'll use those. Trying to use up things that I already have. Okay, I'm just going to do the flower. And kind of run it off the edge so the picture or the journaling, it's not in the way. There, a little turkey. It's got a mind of its own. Let's move it up a little bit like that. Okay. Let's 
wants to stay down. Wants to kind of lift up a little bit. Here's that. A little bit on the stem for the bigger ones. And a little bit there. I don't know where I got these. I've had them forever. I'm just doing the, the tip of it so that you, the picture will go behind it. And then all we have left is the insert. Okay, and I've got four mats cut out for it. Let me put that up here. I've still got lots of ephemera left. Oh my gosh. We'll be ready to make our album cover next. One more top piece, a little tab. Okay, and that will go in base page two. Okay, <clears throat> and we'll get all this scraps cleaned up. And I'll be back and we'll put our cover together. Okay, we're going to put our cover together now. I've got two pieces of 8.5 by 11 joined together. Um, this time I did, instead of score tape, I joined it with the art glitter glue. I watched an online stream that Tammy Merrill had the other night, and that's what she did. And she said it was working really good for her, so I thought I'd give it a try. And so far, no problems noted. It looks really good, and I'll show you on the other side. Oh, two of my little cut-aparts are stuck there. But it's nice and smooth, no problems at all. So, I put down my spine, which is a nine by one and a half, I believe. Yes, one and a half. And then I have... Uh, score tape. I'm just using up what I've got left. I don't prefer the red line tape, but I had a bunch of it, so I'm using it up. And these are going to go on either side. I do have a quarter inch uh, strip of the score tape as a spacer, and it helps when you put your inside piece together as well. So we're going to put our ruler up here along the top so that we get a straight edge. And we're going to take all of these off. And this is going to go right against the ruler and the little quarter inch score tape. And she had a different way of doing the corners this time without mitering them. And I know y'all have put a million covers together, but I wanted to show you that in case you didn't see her stream. And it really turned out neat. I did it on a scrap I had just to make sure I was going to like it before I actually cut into my cover. And so far it looks super good. Okay, so up to the cardstock, 
her up to the ruler and over to the score tape. And it. And same thing on this side. If I get a hold of it, I don't have a lot of fingernails. Mine break real easy. I think it's under the edge there. I'll get it from the other side in a minute. Bound determine I'm going to use up this stash of stuff I've got. There's no sense in keeping buying stuff and leaving this lay, you know. But if you put it away, you forget you got it. That's what I do. I try to be neat and tidy and put things away, and then I forget what I've got. So, it's kind of that old out of sight, out of mind thing. And believe me, it happens, at least to me. Okay, so we got our straight edge here, and we're going to scoot this up to there and lay it down. Okay, now I'd like to have an inch. We're only going to have three quarters up here, but that's. I tried to stay away from this sticker they had on there, and it because I was afraid maybe it wouldn't glue down good. I'm just going to measure off an inch. And Cut that excess away. This Tim Holtz ruler is really nice for that. You can lay the one inch on there and draw your line and cut it. And mine isn't going to be exactly straight, the cutoff part, but what's left will be straight. That's all that matters. cut this off just with the scissors. I think the one she did the other night, she was short on one of her ends. I think she said she only had like a half an inch left to turn over, but she did okay. It still worked, so we should be okay with our little short top edge. Okay. I like to go around it with a bone folder just to make sure I get a good edge. And we'll run a thin line of liquid glue in there too. It just helps soften the fibers when you turn it over. I tried to get those stickers off and they're just not cooperating at all. Oh, I hear the baby. He's not happy. Okay. Now we like to stand it up and roll it. Now I've never used this American Craft for a album cover before, so if it cracks I'm not going to be happy and then I'm going to have to tear it off and start over. The last cover that I wrapped, which Lot of, I don't wrap them very often. I like to use the black tape. But I didn't want black tape with these colors, you know, so we're going to wrap. But the last one that I wrapped, I used a cardstock I had gotten from Tamara, and it was called, um, what is her brand? She has a brand that she carries, and it's really nice, and it does not crack when you do your covers. At least it didn't for me. I was very pleased with it. So we're going to roll this side. Kind of help it along with our scoring tool. Bone folder, whatever you call it. 
It has so many names. And we'll do this side. Once we get this part done, then I'll go off camera and I'll cut the rest of my pieces. And then I'll come back and we'll put it together. And I'll give you all the measurements. But there's no point in me having you watch me do all the cutting. So we need need these folded so we got this fold line here. So we're going to have this little corner in there. And we want that fold mark. And I'm following Tamara's instructions because it worked for her so it better work for me. So let's fold this back over and make sure we've got a good corner guide there. Okay. Now, she went in here on each of these corners and she said that she was making boxes one night and she thought, why don't we do our album covers the way we do box corners? And she cut out the whole corner like that. And when you put it together, it's going to be perfect. Now, if you have to trim a little off of there, you can. But she said she has never had one corner mess up since she started doing it that way. And I had never even thought of it myself. But it makes good sense. If it works for a box, why wouldn't it work for an album, you know? So, this is the scrap I used to prove it to myself. And I folded it over. And you can see it made a perfect corner. So, no, I'm not from Missouri, but I had to prove it to myself. You know, they're the show me people. You have to prove everything to them. <laughs> or at least that's, that's what they're called. It's the show me state. So there's that. And we cut out this little corner right up to the chipboard. And your corners don't show. It's really cool. Your chipboard doesn't isn't exposed. Didn't get that quite cut. Okay. <coughs> now we need score tape. Here. And when you mitre your corners, you always end up with these angled cuts. That won't happen now. short ends. I think I want a little piece in here too. Just to make sure I've got super good coverage. I think we're going to need another piece in there. So by the time I put the glue in here, this is going to catch. But this was deeper, so I thought I better have another piece there. Okay. So let's do our long ends first. This looks like it's a little extra long. Make sure it's not going to hang over. It's not. Put the score tape in a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, let's pull this one off. Actually, I need it to be away from me so I can roll it. And we're going to put a little bit of glue in here. Oops. I better get these out of here, hadn't I? Get that pin and pick that up. Yeah, I want that out of there. Almost forgot it. It would be a no no. Just a little bit of glue in here. Okay. Now we're going to pull it in towards the middle. Off too. Why didn't you guys holler at me and tell me to get those out of there? There we go. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have heard you, right? Said, Stop, Bobby, look what you're doing. It's stuck, but it's okay. It's going to work just fine. So, some glue in here. can do our short ends. But before I do that, I want to see if I have to trim anything. Oh, that's already off. I think I might want just a little smidge off of this one. I don't want to have any overhang. Maybe just a smidge of a taper. Okay, let's take this off. Scraps of paper everywhere. And we'll do our glue. The only thing that worries me is that stupid label there, and I could not get it off. I was afraid to turn up the paper. Okay. I like to pull it towards me. Perfect. Well, Taylor, you are right. Absolutely right. Just a hair. I just feel more comfortable doing that. But not much. Just ever so slightly. Just off the corner, but not all the way up to the edge. Because then you might run a risk of exposing your corner, your uh, chipboard. <coughs> if you have any glue that seeps out on your corner, just wipe it off real quick. Because this stuff dries clear anyway. It's awesome glue. Let's pull this up together. Yep, I love it. That's cool. Isn't that neat? There's our outside of our album cover. I'm going to cut the inside pieces 
and the decorative pieces and I'll be back and we'll finish this little thing up. Alright guys, see you shortly. Alright, <clears throat> alright guys. I went ahead and glued everything together just simply because it's just a matter of cutting, measuring, gluing, stuff you can, everybody knows how to do and I didn't want to take all your time with that. But I wanted to show you the finished cover. This is just a little image I colored uh, with colored pencils. Um, the Prismacolor pencils that I have, I really like them. They do a really nice job. Everything else is from the collection. I wrapped a piece of polka dot ribbon around the spine. And then I just have the striped paper on the back with a little panel that um, you can put a date or who it's to and from, however the person wants to fill it out. Then when you open it up, on the inside cover I just put a little pocket and I did a large collage with photo mats and some of the ephemera. And then I stuck some other pieces of uh, journaling mats, um, photo mats and what have you in there. And then this little envelope that I made. There's nothing in it, but I just thought it'd be cute to see stick a note for whoever you send it to. Put another one of those tulips on it. Then this is page one as you know with the two flaps. <clears throat> the pull out. This is the pockets with the journaling spots inside. The waterfall with nine pictures. This is the double flap all the extra photos. Don't you just love these papers? These are the uh, pockets with the um, removable photo mats and each have an insert. This is loose so that you can tuck a photo behind it. This one is as well. Uh, the insert is here. A photo mat and a journaling spot. Same over here. And then this is your little gatefold with all the little tulips, photo mats, and journaling. I thought it turned out really, really cute. I'm really pleased with it. Then I have another collage on the back with two large photo mats and three more pieces of the ephemera tags. Hitting that little lip in there. There we go. And that's it. It was really easy to make. A lot of cut in the paper, but it was fun. And I just enjoyed it because the paper is so cheery and happy. Alright, thank you guys. I'll do a walkthrough so uh, you can see it first. And if you'd like to uh, make it, you can follow this tutorial. Thanks a lot. Bye.